Welcome to this overview of creating and updating documentation for Article 30 of GDPR. We're using an Excel worksheet which has been set up with a, with a template for filling out the Article 30 information. We'll start with column A where we have an external ID that can be arbitrarily chosen as you like. Next we have the name of the data asset which you're attempting to document. Next we look at the type of storage. Is it cloud? Is it on a local server? Or is it printed? In column D we have a brief description of each of the data items which we want to inventory. Next we need to record the name of the data controller and their contact details including their data protection officer if one is available or the GDPR representative for countries or companies which are not based in the EU. The responsible person is the person within the company who has responsibility for this particular data asset. Next we look at the question of whether the data is structured or unstructured. So for example application forms are generally unstructured because they're handwritten and they're not easily indexed whereas something like salesforce.com is very structured and stored in a database. Next we want to ask ourselves is this data asset in scope for GDPR? Most of these things are in scope but not all and those which are not in scope need to be justified with some descoping information. Some items are not required to be documented under Article 30, particularly for companies with fewer than 250 employees. There are three bases for deciding if something is required for Article 30. Is the data processing occasional? Or is it something which is done on a regular basis? Is there a high risk to the rights and freedoms of data subjects? So, for example, if employee information was lost as a result of an intrusion into salesforce.com, that could lead to identity theft. So that is potentially a high-risk breach. And the third aspect we look at is, does it include special categories of data? So, for example, Bupa, which is a medical insurance, provides application forms which capture very sensitive medical information. An important characteristic is to know which is the country of processing. Where is the data being stored, processed and backed up? Most of these cases it's here in the United Kingdom, but in some cases it is a third country. We also want to know which countries is it possible to access the information in. A very important question is to determine what is the purpose of processing the information. We'd like to know what are the categories of data subjects. So for example, salesforce.com stores information on former and active employees. The categories of personal data gives us an opportunity to look at what personal data is being processed. We'd also like to know categories of recipients, including those in third countries. That is, who is receiving a copy of this personal data? And a very important aspect to consider is transfers to third countries and some documentation of the safeguards. In the case of Salesforce.com, they have a very good system of binding corporate rules, which are very well documented on their website. An important characteristic is the technical and organizational security measures. You'll need to consult with your data processor to find out what are being used, but typically this will include strong access control and on-disk encryption, as well as encryption in transit. The method of collection means how is the personal data captured. And of course, it's helpful to know, is the information in electronic form or on paper? For each set of data, we need to know what is our retention period. How long do we keep the data before we're required to delete it? Here in the UK, for example, 
Typically, employment data is maintained for at least six years after the employee has left the company. For every single data which is stored within the company, we need to know what is the legal basis for our processing. And remember, there are six different bases for processing personal data under GDPR, including consent, contract, legitimate interest, public interest, vital interest, and so on. We'll also need to have a link to the legal justification for processing the data. If consent is the basis for our processing, it's helpful to have a link to those records of consent for that particular piece of data. A privacy notice is required in almost every case. For the cases where information is being collected and consent is required, you need to present the privacy notice to the person from whom the information is being collected. And where information is particularly sensitive, for example, uh, very high risk to the rights and uh, privileges of uh, data subjects, then we'll need to do a data protection impact assessment. Now we get to the data processors section of the form. The data processor is the company that's responsible for the actual processing of information, as opposed to the controller who's responsible for making decisions about what information is being processed and how. We'd like to know what are the categories of processing. So for example, Salesforce.com handles certain administration functions, they maintain the storage, they handle payrolls, and they do backups of the data. Transfers of personal data to third countries is also very important. And we want to have a general description of the technical and organizational security measures used by the data processor. If there are any other articles which are impacted under GDPR, here's the place where we can document them. So, as you see, Article 30 requires us to review each of the different places where we're processing personal data within the enterprise and to collect information about that processing. This information is required to be maintained in case the Data Protection Authority which in the case of the United Kingdom is the Information Commissioner's Office, requests it. If you're unable to provide this information, that can lead to fines or other sanctions from the Data Protection Authorities. This worksheet is freely available for anyone who wants to use it. Thank you very much and tune in for our next presentation later on this website.